Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Priska, and I will be your MC for today. So I hope you all enjoy your lunch time. But before we start, uh, I think let us begin with a prayer first, yeah? So uh, everyone, please pray along with your own belief, and I will be leading according to my Catholic faith. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Father, we praise you for your love and your faithfulness towards your children. Thank you for every seat that has been filled today. Bless this meeting today, all those presents, all those we will encounter afterward. Guide us to make the every moment count in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I think since now uh, it's beyond lunchtime, some of you might be feeling drowsy, right? I think it would be it wouldn't be uh, fun, yeah, if we just start the session directly. So let me uh, let me invite my friend RC to come forward and lead the ice breaking games. RC, are you here with us? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. It's me again, and we're going to have our second ice breaking session today. Hope you guys enjoy it, and yeah. Mm, is it Daryl or Fabian who's gonna share the screen? Only me. Yes, thank you. Yep, hope you guys had your lunch already. And yes, we're going to play the games now. First question. How many seconds are there in January? Hmm. This one is quite tricky, but it's quite easy if you know. You can type your answer in the chat box and then we'll read it out for you. One, yeah. How about the others? Are you guys here? One, one. Okay, let's reveal the answer. Is it one? Yep, you can click next, Daryl. Yep, it's one, January 2nd. Second question, what is the rarest m, &M color? A yellow, B blue, C brown. If you're obsessed with m, &M you should know. <laughs> Blue, mm -hmm. everyone is saying blue. Okay, okay. Oh, Kila, you don't like m, m Is it Kyla? I think it's Kyla, yeah. So maybe some of our person right here cannot eat chocolate, yeah, RC. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the answer. They really can click next. It's brown, see. The more you know. Next question. Why is the number six afraid of seven? Hmm. I wonder. Because seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. Yes, correct. Seven, eight, nine. Okay. And we're now going to the next question. Which country in invented ice cream? Is it A, China, B, New Zealand, C, the, the United States? China. Mm -hmm. China, another China. Is it China? Everything is made in China. Yeah, I guess most of the things are made from China. Okay, let's reveal the answer. Yep, it is China. Ice cream is made from China. Next question, please. Okay, another guess the word. I'll give you a hint, it's an animal. Anyone knows? Maybe Afals want to try answering too? Oh, I'm seeing dinosaur here as the answer. How about the other? <laughs> dinosaur. Dinosaur. 
Is it dinosaur? Okay. Let's reveal the answer. Yes, it is dinosaur. Congrats to all of you who got it right. Last question. What can make the octopus laugh? Okay, anyone knows? What can what can make the octopus laugh? Tentacles. Oh, is it easy for you? <laughs> tentacles, tentacles. Is it correct? Yes, it is. Tentacles, tentacles, tentacles. Yeah, correct. That's it for our games. Hope you guys enjoy and enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you. See you. Back to Priska. Thank you, RC. That was a fun way to break the ice. Okay, congratulations to those who got it right. I think after this, you may type down your address and ask RC for the GoFood prize. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, now I believe that everyone should be more motivated for today's session. Um, on this morning, we learned what international business is all about. And now in this session, we will be discussing your study plan and your academic advisory. This session will be led by Bapak Marco Hermawan, SAAKM IBPHD, our head of international business program and our academic advisor lecture team. Pak Marco, are you here with us? Yes, I am. Okay, good to see you again, Pak Marco. Good to see you too, Priska. Yes, uh, Pak Marco, you may begin the session. The spotlight is yours. Okay, thank you so much. Um, right, so as we um, have explained uh, a little bit about international uh, business program, okay, um, this session would be more towards uh, what's inside of each of the courses, all right? So um, I think the agenda would be to uh, understand or how, how you actually um, um, understand each of the courses and how uh, would you um, prepare for, for, for all the courses that we will give to you. Um, we also have an academic uh, advisory session where all of the students will meet um, one academic advisor from our faculty and we will uh, divide uh, into uh, breakout sessions. Okay, that's pretty much about the uh, agenda for today. Um, right. Um, so um, I think um, the first session. I'm not sure whether uh, Miss Ayupita is here. Miss Ayu, are you here? Miss Ayu. Hi, Marco. Sorry. Yes, okay. I'm here. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, so me and Miss Ayupita will uh, will show you the uh, course distribution. Um, from let's let's just go ahead with the because each program has uh, sorry each um, streaming has its own uh, courses uh, right course structure. I mean. Um, so I think um, we can explain uh, each of the courses uh, based on the um, specialization or streaming. Um, would that be sufficient enough to explain everything? Um, um, sure. Um, let me prepare the documents first. Um, okay. but also, the, I think the students can also access the website if yes, they yes. want one. All right, I'm looking at the website right now. So everyone, um, so I need you to go to um, this, wait a minute, address, okay. Right. So please click on the curriculum, okay? And study plan Venusian 2024, okay? This should be the same with the uh, 2025 batch. Okay. Um, 
All right. So um, <clears throat> now um, uh, we have here uh, some of uh, our faculty uh, who are also the uh, subject content coordinator. All right. Um, so we have uh, Dr. Sanjukta here. We have Dr. Um, Dahlia. And do we have Dr. Nuriana, Ibu Ana here? Uh, we have Mike Kimoku here as well as the SCC, right? Okay, um, shall we put on the uh, website or uh, will you put the uh, Excel file to share screen? Who are you? Oh, I think looking from the website, I think will be better. But... Okay, yeah, all right. Okay, we've discussed um, some of the courses uh, in general yeah, uh, this morning, and um, we will start from uh, introduction to management and business, code course MGMT 6011, all right? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a fundamental uh, course for all the management students to uh, learn about the uh, management and business uh, in general. Okay, um, so um, I believe the SEC would be uh, Ibu Ana, is that correct? Yes, uh, Ibu Ana is not here at the moment, um, but yes, yeah, she is the SEC for Introduction to Management and Business. Okay, um, right. Um, well, I believe that you also teach this course, yeah? Uh, what would be the uh, main idea of this course and how students can learn from this. Um, I think for, uh, for introduction to management and business, uh, you would learn the foundation of, you know, of, of what is business and um, how you actually can have different management, le management level and styles. Um, we will have uh, actually for uh, the first time in IB, we will have, we will conduct a, an industry visit, uh, a virtual industry visit in some of the, in one of the, uh, one of the syllabus, one of, one of the session. Um, we already chosen one of uh, an industry that we will go to. Um, and I think it's going to be an exciting um, learning process for the students because you not only going to learn in class, but you're also going to learn from the practitioner itself. Interesting, interesting. So um, I think that's the thing that uh, uh, we introduce as early as possible to uh, our students, yeah. Um, the, the experience that you will have uh, during the industry visit, you will meet some of the executives, yeah, uh, the managers, and uh, you can also do uh, some of the observation, yeah, in the in the office as well. Okay. Um, for business economics, it's general to all the students, uh, management students, yeah. Uh, I will be teaching this course, and basically, it consists of microeconomics and macroeconomics. Yeah, the micro parts would be. Um, uh, discussing on more towards um, how the demand and supply uh, exist in the, uh, uh, in the in the market basically okay so you will learn about the graph where the curves goes up where the curves goes down and how it interacts between uh, supply and demand that's pretty much about it the macroeconomics on the other side is to learn about the gross domestic product and gross national product of a particular country, the calculations of um, um, C meaning consumption, you have the saving, you have the investments, you have the government spending, uh, export and import, right? More towards the uh, macroeconomic uh, of, of a company. So there will be a lot of discussions that uh, relates with um, the economy of a, a country, okay? Right. Um, do we have business statistics and mathematics? Uh, because I think it belongs to uh, other SEC. Okay. Um, let's just go ahead. Um, 
global business environment. I believe uh, Ms. Lily is the SEC for global business environments. Can you share a bit of a uh, course description here? Sorry, the SEC actually is uh, Kim. Pa oh, Kim. Mike, sorry. Yeah. yeah, Mike. And I think Pak Kim is already also here. So maybe. Oh, yeah, yes, Mike, okay. please uh, share the. Um... OK. Um, uh, this is actually a basic uh, foundation course for the IB students. So basically, it's about the internationalization and the globalization. So what you guys will be uh, studying and discussing with me in the classroom is about uh, how the political economic uh, factors are actually affecting your business and my business and everyone's business. And like, for example, uh, foreign exchange currency and how you operate in other country as an international operation, of course, including how you do the marketing strategy. So basically, a uh, global business environment course is a very broad. Uh, there are uh, many chapters, uh, but it's going to be a uh, are very uh, useful for the students as a foundation courses. Thank you, Mike. Um, interesting. <clears throat> we have a legal aspect in business. I guess, uh, I think Gilbert was saying about uh, you, you, you expect to learn a lot of things about uh, contracts and all that stuff, right, in legal aspect. Okay, um, okay. Um, the SEC of the legal aspect. Can you share some of the issues here? Yes, it was Sanju. Sanju, yeah. Hello. Yes, Sanju, yeah, we can hear it. You want me to speak? Yeah, thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Sanjakta Chaudhary Kaul, and uh, the courses that we you would have with me uh, under my SEC are basically business communication, uh, and you would have business ethics, uh, which is out there. So the business communication course is going to form a very vital part of your learning process and you will see that uh, we are very clear that business communication is not same as marketing communication so and more so uh, you know in the current times of pandemic how the role of communication becomes so imperative so important when you are communicating with people all over the world you know through internet uh, based or a medium based communication so we are very excited about to share this course with you because we have a very brand new syllabus that has been worked out, taking into consideration the new challenges uh, that the future managers would have to face, uh, you know, handling the communications which is out there. Uh, the second course that you have with me is on uh, business ethics and uh, that usually big one begins to wonder what has one got to do studying ethics, you know? And you will see that business ethics is today one of the most fundamental courses uh, that you would study in any university which is out there. You basically understand what corporations are doing right, why they are not doing right, what is the role of the government, and more so importantly, what becomes my role as a future manager, so, you know, in terms of making ethical decisions. So I'm supposed to come to work. Should I sign in? Should I not sign in? Hmm? Because nobody is watching me. That starts with the very basic element of ethics, moves on to larger issues of business, society, and governance. So we hope that you enjoy these courses that you have. That's from me. Yeah, thank you, Sanju. So uh, the one that uh, Dr. Sanju was saying is uh, leadership and ethics, yeah, and that will be offered on semester six. Yeah. Um, all right, we go randomly basically because uh, some of the courses uh, is actually handled by other programs such as accounting. All right, it's not under uh, the IV program. 
uh, basically the ones that we uh, uh, manage is uh, related to international business uh, uh, management. Yeah. Um, right. So, um, right, uh, Ibu Dahlia or Miss Lily, uh, would you like to explain some of the courses that you uh, coordinate? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pak Marco. Um, I am the SEC is one of the one that I know is the business Indonesia in which you also teach the business Indonesia. In yeah. the business Indonesia, I believe that we are going to share about the uh, Indonesian economy and as well as the political right because it is uh, kind of like influence each other and also what the uh, uh, business that um, happening in Indonesia right now okay maybe Pak Marco you can also add as you are the uh, lecturer of this course um, I think uh, the, the interesting part for this um, course is that you will also learn a lot of things about how to uh, uh, understand doing business with the Indonesian, yeah, the culture, uh, culturally speaking, and as well uh, uh, the current situation uh, in Indonesia. So uh, uh, this course is mostly uh, reading newspapers, gathering data from the real world uh, um, uh, occurrence. Okay, uh, I will ask all the students to look for the current situations about let's say, uh, economic in Indonesia, business sectors in tourism, business sector in education, what happens during the pandemic, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So yeah, um, it's a lot of discussion and a lot of uh, uh, paper. Right. Uh, do we have Nuriana? I don't think that Ibu Anna is here. Okay. Um, I think we have Pak Sukma as well, right? I'm here, Pak. Okay. Pak Sukma, I believe that you uh, are teaching human resource management. Uh, do you have any thing to add about what the course looks like? What the course looks like? Okay. So, uh, okay. Hello, everyone. So, uh, yes, I'm teaching uh, human resource management. It's supposed to be, be uh, this thing is supposed to be explained by Miss Anna, but if you would like to know what is a uh, human resource management is, so it's all about, you know, uh, studying human resources, it to helps everyone, especially employees, professionals, to effectively assess the relevant candidates to based on the personal traits and critical skills required for the job. So what you guys will learn in human resource management is you're going to learn about uh, uh, recruitment, right? You're going to learn about uh, rewards, like a compensations. And then you even learn about how to do uh, to develop your employees. So it's going to be a training and development. So mostly, you cannot run your business without this uh, human resource uh, management knowledge. So it's going to be fun. So that's what I can tell you about, about HRM. Thank you, Marco. Interesting, interesting. Um, I think there is a tips and tricks on how you encounter an interview session isn't it <laughs> yes it's gonna be some kind of simulations so yeah i know that most of the the, the, uh, the students here they never have an experience uh, having an interview it's like a job interview but we're going to do that simulation so i think it's going to be great right interesting okay uh thank you pak uh we also have pa seiji pa seiji how are you pa so marco yeah, uh, I believe you are teaching some of the courses related to Southeast Asian culture. Yes, exactly. Right. Pak. So if I may share a little bit about SEA culture, not only the SEA culture, it's like uh, cross-cultural management and those kind of uh, cultural related stuff. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes if you feel that you're interested in other culture, you want to learn more and everything, these are the main course for those. Yeah, most of my courses will be filled with those kind of activities, case study. So when you join or jump into this uh, course, yeah, later on, you will be meeting other students, other people from other university from those Southeast Asia directly in your classroom. And you'll do a lot of interactions with them. Yeah, some of them can be included in the YASA project. Is there any status yet? Oh, but I don't know. Okay. So, for example, uh, YASA project is collaboration with uh, IB and International 
office or uh, overseas program. So we ensure you have a real life lab as well as a real life interactions with those students from other country in the SEA. So I think this is that's also one of the selling point of IB. <laughs> Although you're already here, so yeah. Thank you, Pamar. Okay, thank you, uh, Sechi. So I'm also interested in learning culture. Yeah, um, and if you go deeper into how you understand other people's cultures, it's it's, it's about how you actually being empathized. Okay, uh, you empathy and uh, uh, understand why this kind of community are doing such and such, right? And how do they actually deal business? Okay, because uh, uh, speaking to other people from another country requires uh, all this understanding. You're not only uh, uh, possessing yourself. Okay, uh, uh, you need to understand what the counterparts is actually uh, expressing or saying. Okay, and all that. So it's an interesting area, basically. Um, right. We just go through with some of the courses that you might need to uh, excel, right? Um, we have operation management. That's that's another thing that um, I think Pasechi, you are also the one who is teaching, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. But so I don't want to sugarcoat everything. So if one previously say a culture, I would say it's an interesting one. Uh, operation management is also an interesting one, but it's a bit heavy for the heavy side so oops sorry wait uh my secretary just demolished some paper sorry about that <laughs> no no worries, no no worries. <laughs> okay so uh, operation management is a bit on the heavier side so you have to be prepared when you go to operations management there will be some a little bit of calculations a little bit of uh theory uh, you'll be seeing a lot of this kind of a course in IB. IB is not only about theory, theory, theory. No, sometimes you have a calculation, valuation, but at the end, these are the things that you need to know on a strategic level. Yeah, after all, we are all preparing you guys to be international entrepreneur. Yeah, so it will be a babkus if you become an international entrepreneur without knowing the details. And speaking of the devil. <laughs> who's handling that operational thing in Senayan campus is also me. So hopefully I can share a little bit, well, just a little bit uh, walking the talk like, in this sense. Thank you, Pak Marco. Thank you. So you have a technical skill, you have the uh, soft skills, you have the um, uh, calculation skills, SIs, negotiation, communications, mostly every, uh, everything. Uh, related to the uh, business applicative uh, skills. All right. Um, I think Ms. Tatum has joined. Ms. Tatum, how are you? I'm good, Tomako. Sorry, I'm late. No, it's all right. It's all right. We are, we are currently discussing about some of the courses that uh, IB students will take. And yeah, uh, we just passed by the operation management and I saw a research methodology, which you might want to share what, the, uh, what course would this be. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'll share my video as well. Okay, so shall uh, I stop sharing? Yeah. Hi, yeah. everybody. Um, I'm, uh, I'm the lecturer for teaching the research methodology. So in research methodology, this this is uh, actually the first step for you to prepare for your um, thesis later on. Why it comes so early uh, in semester four or three or four? Because it's, you need to make your thesis, uh, regardless whether you continue your study in BINUS or you do a double degree, because that's the requirement of the government. Um, so not all um, uh, partners will deliver the research methodology. So at least you will uh, uh, encounter research methodology in Venus before you leave. So what will we cover? First of all, uh, are you familiar with uh, with a publication that is called a journal, a journal, a scholarly journal or academic journal? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I saw some, some head nodding. Very good. 
So in this course, we will um, be familiar uh, with reading academic journals, which is not very easy or the most exciting things to do. Um, you know, it can be a bit dry and can be a very technical uh, kind of article. So, um, and then we will look at different kind of research in, in international business area. So we will read uh, articles in the area of, for example, HR, um, uh, culture, or um, new research in, for example, young entrepreneurs, something like that, uh, depending on your interest. So I will usually divide topics and then you will find journals and then you will review it. And then we will look deeper at the methodology. So we will be uh, familiar with what is quantitative research and what is qualitative research. So that's basically uh, what is in the research methodology one. So reading up academic journals, um, exposed to uh, uh, research uh, terminologies, and then know the basics to differentiate what is the quantitative methodology and qualitative methodology, how to uh, gather data and how to analyze data and how to read data. This will be a, a good continuation from your managing business information and um, statistics courses. Yeah, thank you, Butatum. Um, and it's also the baseline for uh, students to prepare their thesis, right? Uh, for the thesis methods. Oh, yeah. And it will be very uh, useful as well if you are already familiar with reading journal articles. It will help you with your more advanced courses because you are required to, to do more readings in um, your more advanced courses. Right. Great. Um, okay. Um, so who do we have uh, on our faculty list? I think I've seen um, Ms. Wulan here. So I'm just admitting Ms. Wulan. Ms. Wulan, are you around? Hi, Marco. Uh, I'm sorry. Hang on just a second. I have yeah, to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you have a double uh, device. Yes, and my internet connection has been really, really challenging. So uh, apologies. Um, I don't want to get kicked out. I've been struggling to get in. Um, hi, everyone. Um, since I'm a very shy person, what would you like me to say, Marco? <laughs> no, we, we were discussing about the uh, number of courses that uh, IB students will take uh, during the semesters. So yes. we just discussed about this is methodology with Ms. Tatum and uh, what the students will expect. Um, I think uh, what uh, you, you also teach is uh, cross-culture management and also character building, if I'm not mistaken. And also introduction to management. So um, I, I will be looking into many of the freshmen uh, uh, in classes um, soon. And uh, not to mention that I'm also the university counselor. So um, now that I'm expecting a lot of you being in a unhealthy mental state, but even if you are in a healthy mental state and uh, you are having a hard time transitioning, adjusting to this new, um, campus lifestyle um you are always more than welcome to reach out to me yeah um sometimes during the uh you, during your studies there may be some uh issues that uh disrupt your uh learning process okay so um we provide you with some um con what do you call it counseling yeah uh whenever there's is an issue yeah, with, with, with personally yeah, or, or even with your friends and etc. Et and we, we do provide you with some uh, counseling right. uh, advice. Right. Yeah. right. Transitioning is always a challenge. So um, we understand that it could be um, difficult and even more difficult to some. 
um, especially um, with overwhelming assignments, uh, the demands of um, adulthood and independency. So yes, um, if you are, if you and your friends, for example, are having issues in adjustment and think you might wanna discuss on how to find better ways to adjusting to campus life, um, please do not hesitate to reach me. And I look forward to seeing some of you in the, I think, uh, well, yeah, cross-cultural management classes would be for the um, more senior students, a third year, uh, but introduction to management and character building most likely will uh, wipe out the entire freshman year, Marco, yeah? Yeah, exactly. All right. Um... All right, okay, um, I'm just checking who uh, any faculty that uh, or, or any faculty that you want to add, add in uh, about the course distribution, course structures, etc. Uh, Miss Ayu, do you have anything to add about the course structures? Uh, I think. Um, no, but. All right. Um, right. Um, so uh, we, we do have. Quack, quack, Michael, yes, would you yes, like to uh, just dwell a little bit with the students on the thesis part, although it comes four years later? And it is uh, because it's also under my KPI things. If it's okay with your permission, I'll take two minutes. Is it okay? Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, my dear students, uh, I want to raise an alarm in your first semester itself when you're joining uh, Venus and everything is so beautiful. And the challenge is maintaining the intensity, what you feel in the first year down up to next 48 months. So, don't look at it as four years, but look at it in terms of 48 months, right? So, you basically work about 214 weeks that you finish this course in. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things I wanted to talk to you about, which comes in your last semester, semester eight, and it is your thesis. And uh, many students uh, do not realize they may have great GPAs uh, in their first seven semesters. They may do you know, very well. Uh, but when it comes to thesis, many students really struggle and that's almost like one whole semester. And the two most important things, you need to pass your thesis as per the Indonesian law to really graduate and submit uh, uh, like a dissertation, which is out there, right? Which is mandatory. And what really sails you through in your thesis will be two things. One is your research methods course, uh, which is taken by uh, people like Dr. Tatum, uh, Pak Mako, uh, uh, Pak Sechi. You must ensure your research methods one and research methods two, you really break your mind to understand. Number two is your ability to cite and write in good English, because you are coming to an international business program. And especially for those of you who will be going uh, for exchange programs, you know, you will find that uh, if you do not understand research and research methods, which is out there, it's going to be very challenging for you in your international exchange program, especially if you have an international supervisor. So the trick is to learn these courses extremely well, even out of your time, today there's so much of uh, help available to, you know, uh, on internet. Make sure you understand fundamentally what is a qualitative research and what is a quantitative research. It almost amounts to your eight credits for you to pass. And many students lose their on-time graduation because they do not submit the thesis and pass the thesis, right? So uh, it's very important what comes last, we pull and draw your attention that it is the first most thing from day one, you should know how to cite and use references. You saw uh, Atika in, in the earlier session mentioning 
uh, Gabby mentioning the importance of that. So please pay attention to your thesis, which is out there. That's from my side. Thank you. Right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sanjeev. So I'm not sure whether you can see my writings. Uh, just to give a glance on how you plan, right? Remember this, this morning I shared about uh, how you plan your uh, study uh, for the next four years, okay? Uh, so your end result would, uh, would be the completion of your thesis in year four, semester eight, yeah? Normally, we, we will take this on semester eight, okay? In research method, um, I think it's in semester four, well, here you have academic English, which starts from semester two. Okay? Um, so maybe some of you wondering why we are giving uh, academic English, right? Maybe some of you have uh, uh, studied English for uh, quite some time during your junior or high school. Okay, um, we give or we equip academic English one and two is to prepare you with a lot of things that relates to the academic way of uh, writing and expressing in English, okay? So if you don't excel this academic English, then it will also relate to the other uh, courses. I'm not saying this is exclusive, right? This is not the only thing that you have to study. There are a lot of courses that really uh, depends on how you write a good English, a good academic English, right? But maybe the whole program requires you to do good English, okay? Project Hatchery, on the other hand, is trying to um, improve or uh, let's just say um, to excel your uh, creativity skill to uh, ideas, innovations, and all that. This is the baseline for doing a lot of things that relates to innovation. And that also uh, drives through the um, way on how you become creative, the ideas, and then how you put that on the thesis report, all right? Research method, uh, uh, the research method alone is actually to equip you with the research capabilities, the research um, skills, that allows you to um, do the thesis based on the uh, research background. So all these things, basically, you, you, you probably need to make another line of uh, relationship between the courses so that you know why I should study this course is because this will be the fundamental to take to another course, more advanced, and so forth. Okay? So I think these kind of things that you... Uh, really need to discuss with your uh, academic uh, advisors uh, later on. Right. Okay. <clears throat> um, so any other comments from the faculty about the course distribution. Uh, Pak, do you want to uh, draw some attention to uh, the students' internships? Because we have the UON and then, so they should be aware that that is again a very major goal that they have to milestone in their study. Um, yes, that's right. I think um, I shared a bit of uh, information about the enrichment track, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the enrichment track itself uh, is only uh, available for those who are taking three plus one, yeah, uh, the, for double degree with uh, CBS Cologne, um, Edinburgh Napier University, and Bournemouth University in UK. Okay, because you guys will be, be traveling uh, to those universities on your seven and eight semester. While in your sixth semester, prior to that, there will be a lot of uh, options here yeah, for the enrichment track, uh, which I uh, explained to you: internship, entrepreneurship. You you open you you uh, for entrepreneurship. It's kind of unique because uh, you will be team up with your other fellows, and then you will uh, start to uh, materialize 
your idea, your concept, your business model into a real uh, situation. All right. Um, the mentors uh, will guide you to on how you actually develop this business. For instance, I'm just saying you are going to sell this uh, mug. Yeah. And how do you actually start to sell this? Okay. What kind of design that I can actually attract the customer and what types of uh, marketing strategy or marketing um, platform? Will it be the marketplace? Uh, uh, and how would you uh, try to convince the investors that this mug can be sellable in uh, the first six months time? All right, so these are the things that uh, you, you will be studying and then you will, you will be trained from uh, expertise uh, from our mentors. So that when you, whenever you are finished your uh, study, then that model can be carried forward for your future business. All right. Um, research, on the other hand, there's another enrichment called research, which means that uh, some of you would probably say, "Hey, I think I'm interested in developing my uh, research capability." All right. Um, you will be paired up with one of our faculty, yeah, because our um, KPI, okay, if you know KPI, or our task other than teaching is also doing research. And we, we need um, to ask um, some assistance from the students, which, also, which is taking the research enrichments to help them do the data collections, um, collecting questionnaires, right? Uh, interpreting and all that. So, uh, you'll be tapped in with one of the faculty to help them to for their research. And the bonus plus is that once you finish the research uh, enrichment, you can take some of the data or even the topics for your thesis. All right. So that will be carried over to your topic of your thesis. And the last one is the community development, okay, uh, which is uh, more towards the uh, social activity, yeah, uh, empowering the society and as well to help the uh, small and medium enterprise uh, in the society. Okay, right. Okay, thank you, Pak Marco, um, and all of our lecturers for such an insightful session. Now, some of you may uh, have some questions here yeah, after we gain a lot of insights uh, about our course distribution. So please write your uh, questions in the chat box, or you may use the raise hand feature to ask the questions directly. I would like to invite Annabelle to come forward and uh, help me with the Q&A session. Annabelle, are you here? Yes. Okay, thank you, Annabelle. So here we have our first question. Um, why not internships? Do students get paid by companies or not? Right. Um, as far as I know, there are a lot of um, programs yeah, from the company. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, Miss Ayu. Uh, some of them get paid, but some of them don't. Um, so it depends on the company itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think uh, a, a lot of a lot of companies these days would would be actually uh, having a paid internship for the students, um, but um, you need to check uh, check with that with the company that you will be interning with later on. There is a beautiful term for it. They call it unpaid internship. Yes, um, I hope that answers your question. And for the next one, it's directed at uh, Marco. Uh, so can we do our internship programs during our double degree program? 
Yes, um, as I may uh, recall my uh, slides this morning, um, for those of you who are uh, choosing a double degree program, three plus one, okay, you have a chance to do uh, internship on semester six, um, as well as uh, those who are choosing four plus zero, with University of Newcastle, there is uh, one course called Industry Practice, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, that you also have a chance to do internship in semester seven. I may add to that. Sure. Yeah. Usually, when you do uh, double degree programs overseas, if you go to a different country, you will have a very set and structured kind of study plan. Um, and it doesn't usually involve an internship in that country. Um, internship in another country is not very easy to arrange because sometimes it relates to visa requirement. And not all country can accommodate a student visa for internship kind of thing. But there's, it's it's possible um, that you can do part time um, job during your placement uh, when you are in UK or in CBS in Germany or in Australia, you can do part time job according to your visa condition. Uh, so mostly internship will be arranged when you are doing your uh, study in Venus. Um, but we do have some students who manage to get. Um, uh, internship overseas um, during the, the time of the internship that we arrange uh, in semester six. Um, but it is competitive and it really depends on your performance. Um, so we have um, opportunities to do that one, um, to place you for an internship overseas. But because it's competitive, it really depends on your performance. So if you aspire to do that, please give us a good reason to channel you through that competitive track. Thank you for the information. Um, I think uh, while we're still waiting for the next questions to come, uh, may I ask a question to Pak Marco? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no worries, please. Come. Okay, pa. so um, if I uh, take my double degree program to UNSW, is that uh, permissible for me to enroll to the extra courses that are not included to my uh, commerce or international business program? For example, um, if I uh, have my eyes on fashion business, uh, can I enroll to uh, extra courses that related to fashions? All right, interesting question, Briska. Um... For the UNSW, okay, uh, it's a two plus two arrangement, which means that you will stay in business for two years and the next two years in UNSW. Um, if I may say, uh, because uh, recently the, the, the curriculum in UNSW has changed, but hopefully it doesn't change the way uh, students can take some of the uh, electives course there, okay? Um, if you decided to choose, so, so, okay. Um, if you decided to choose a major in international business in UNSW, for instance, okay, Priska, um, they may offer uh, a number of mandatory courses related to IB, okay. Um, but then again, you are also entitled to choose an elective. And that elective can also be related to what your interest is, which is fashion, right? Um, uh, once you are in UNSW, basically um, UNSW administration uh, is the one who will ar arrange that. Um, I think for, uh, there will be also some uh, academic consultation as well that you can ask them. Um, so yeah, there is a possibility. Uh, Normally, uh, the Australian and New Zealand universities have the flexibility to choose uh, some of the elective courses that you are interested in. Some of my students there has also chosen an uh, information system, perhaps, or even finance. Yeah, they, they want to uh, learn a lot more on uh, finance uh, courses in UNSW, which is fine because it's an elective. 
The question is how many electives uh, would depends on the UNSW administration. All right, Priska. Thank you, Pamela. No worries. So do we have another question, Annabelle? We currently don't have any more questions from the freshmen. Um, okay, maybe. Oh, uh, one just came. <laughs> one just came up, sorry. Um, uh, I heard that China cannot allow the student to get part-time or internship because it is, because when we go there, we are on student visa. Is it, so is it possible if we get internship at semester three and four? Okay. Um, for uh, Ningpo University, um, I think there has also been uh, changes in their curriculum as well. Um, for what I remember, there is a course called, I think, a business practice, yeah, that contains uh, internship. But I think uh, it depends on how the lecturers are assigning you to a particular company, okay? Uh, it is under the course uh, session, and uh, yes, it's under uh, student visa, so you cannot find any companies that you wish. Okay, it's it depends on the um, course coordinators or the lecturers who is signing you to a particular company. Yeah, but I'm not sure whether it's still there or not. Yeah, because uh, they have changed uh, the curriculum. We will check later. On. All right, and I'm good. Uh, thank you, Pamoko. I hope that answers the freshman's question. And we have another question, which is, um, do we get to choose which companies we intern at or are the choices provided by Venus? Uh, for internship, I think uh, Ms. Ayu can answer that question. What's the question again? Uh, but the internship, can they choose the company or uh, are we going to assign? Definitely. You guys can choose any company that you want. Or if you don't have any um, you know, connection to the company that you want, uh, we can assist you with that. Um, we have, I think, uh, they, they call it the internship center. But for more information, uh, you can contact me. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ayu. Thank you, Ms. Ayu. Um, the next question is, is it possible to apply for scholarship for a double degree program overseas? Or is scholarship only available when we first apply as the museum? Okay, two key questions. Huh. Um, I'm not sure whether you also are given a chance to, to take scholarship when you enroll. Um, I can only answer the one, the first one, which is, can you apply a scholarship uh, for the double degree program? The answer is yes. In fact, um, some of our students and one of my IB students got uh, uh, 10,000 Australian dollars of scholarship from UNSW yeah, because they also assess uh, our students' uh, transcript, academic record. And as well as they, uh, they, they also see the students' progress when they study abroad. So um, it's a rare thing, uh, I know, because it's like one in a million chance of getting the scholarship abroad from that uh, partner university. Uh, but it's, it, there is a possibility. Yeah? It depends on the, our partner itself, whether they are offering scholarships to UNIS students or not and whether your performance is also uh, well during your study. Thank you, Pai Welcome. Um, I understand that many of the freshmen here may still be unsure about their study plan or their um, streaming program, uh, but do you have any advice pa, on how freshmen may ensure that they are enrolling or uh, taking the right program for them or you may uh, share us uh, about your little bit um, of your college experience on making that decision. Uh, okay, uh, I think some of the faculty wants to share about this as well. Yeah, feel free to uh, answer this question.
I think um, the uh, the easiest answer would be there. There will be a uh, academic uh, advisory after this. Okay, um, uh, all the faculty that uh, is uh, they they can actually um, uh, give you some advice on how you actually can choose which double degree program that is most suitable for for you as well. Okay. Um, again, uh, I keep saying that. Uh, what is your motivations throughout this four-year program? What will you do? What will you be after the next five years time when you start to do business or work in a multinational company or all that? Does that actually fits in with the uh, streaming? I call it streaming, right? Rather than double degree. So streaming that you are uh, looking for. Okay. Um, again, if you look at the uh, uh, website that we have, uh, click on the curriculum, all right? Uh, the arrow just next to the curriculum uh, button. And then you will see a list of double degree program and what they offer. Okay. Um, uh, that can gives you a lot of insights about uh, what they have so far. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you for the experience sharing, Pa. <laughs> Um, we have more questions from the freshmen. Um, in Australia, is it hard to get scholarship for a bachelor program? Mm. Susah -susah gampang. <laughs> Just like I said, yeah, we got only one students, uh, IB students and one uh, finance students that got the um, UNSW scholarship. All right. Mm -hmm. And we haven't got... Yeah, it's, it's basically competitive. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So it depend. It will depend on your performance. It will depend on the competition on that on that year. Um, we got a student in BIS, I think, that got a scholarship not on the bachelor, but straight after the bachelor, he got scholarship. She got scholarship for PhD or master, something like that. So it's a continuation, and it's fully a full scholarship. But right. for um, bachelor degree, it's more limited um, and it's competitive basically, and it's never never big amount. Yeah, I just heard from Marco ten thousand, ten thousand. I think it's a the biggest I ever heard for a, a bachelor scholarship. Usually, it's about five thousand, seven thousand, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. quite rare. So, so we haven't got. Uh, our students haven't got any uh, chance after that. Uh, yeah, and but I think if you already uh, have your study halfway in Venus, um, it's already you know quite a saving to do your double degree. Okay, thank you, thank you, Tatung and Tamago. Um, we have one more question. Um, can you give us some tips to get internship in big cap companies or even consultant groups like ECG? Hmm. Any faculty wants to share this? Um, internship tips. Internship tips. I think from my experience being an internship supervisor, um, it's quite often that students do not apply soon enough um, to good companies. Yeah, So there are some good companies like uh, the startups like Gojek, Grab, um, some of the big ones, Tokopedia, Shopee, um, and then the international companies. Um, and because they are competitive, their recruitment time can be quite extensive um, and they have several steps. And I think um, some students not strategic enough in planning their time. So if the internship should should um, start in June or July, then they will apply in June or July. You know? uh, so that's that's not possible for good companies. Um, and you need to show good track record as well, because especially with Campus Merdeka scheme, there are so many students who would like to get us. Um, uh, internship in these good companies. Um, so you, you, it's going to be more competitive at, at the moment. Um, so I think my tips would be listen to 
or really put your attention to the deadlines and the application, um, the call for applications. There will be several sessions from the internship center on, you know, how to prepare your CV uh, and then when to submit your application and what's the step. So that that will be my tips. Yeah, uh, um, take good attention on the deadlines like that because that can be something that differentiate your application to others. And another thing is uh, show good ethics. Um, once you got accepted, never turn it down just like that because that's also have an impact to the juniors. Yeah. Oh, anak IB International Business from Binus ya. Kurang anjang banget nih udah ditawarin terus langsung nggak diambil. Tahu-tahu hilang. Then we will never recruit from this IB again. So that that have a very big impact to your junior. Yeah. The last one is so important. Yes, I just I add one tip to, for students looking for internships. Uh, what uh, Bhut Atum said is in terms of your preparation and how you're going. There is another thing that I talk, and I talk as somebody who's not an Indonesian, but an international faculty. Uh, it's very important that students take a grip of their own internships. Yes, there is a lot of support you will get from Venus, either through your faculties or, you know, uh, through your graduate support office. But right from the day one, you must be hungry to be the best recruit in the best university, uh, best organizations you want to work with. The time you spent on Facebook and Instagram should be constructive. Can you spend similar amount of time on LinkedIn building networks? Show how hungry you are. Somebody mentioned about a 5,000 Australian dollars, which is out there, that's true. Why would somebody want to give you in an international program something that is meant for an Australian student? What is that value you bring that? And therefore it means developing your skills, reflecting that in CV, which is out there. How outstanding you can be, even if it is a non-paid, but suppose say you get through an ILO or a WHO, not your regular corporations, but there are bigger organizations other than FMCG kind of products, which is out there. Do you really know what you want to do in internship? You don't want to spend your time sending emails and photocopying documents for your super, uh, you know, work supervisor, doing something meaningful. So it doesn't matter whether the company is big or small. The important thing is, does my internship offer me that opportunity to build something into my resume? And that will not happen three weeks or three months before you move to your internship. That has to happen from day one. Today, every time you're talking to your father's friend, uncle, anybody, you know, in your network, in your mind, it should be, can this person help me with an internship? So that should always play in your mind. Networking is the key to success as a business professional. Remember that, network. And network means having set of people to whom you can be meaningful and who bring meaning to you. Yeah. So that is one of the biggest tips I can ever give you as a professional when you look at good internships. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, um, I think we can go to the next agenda, Priska, or Ramda, yeah. Um, yeah. So, for your help, uh, Annabelle, and thank you so much, uh, Pressman, for the questions. I appreciate your excitement and your curiosity on today's topic. And also to our lecturers for such a clear explanation on the answers. And so before we end today's session, I would like to invite uh, all of you to turn on your cameras and let's take a quick uh, photo session. Um, Daryl, please take it away. Uh, so everyone, could you please turn on your camera first and then let's, let's start. Okay, so one, two, Three. Okay, next uh, second slide. One, two, three. And 
then the dot slides. One, two, three. Okay, okay. That's it. Thank you. Um, Back to you. Yeah. Uh, so I think the next agenda is to uh, do a breakout session with the academic advisory. Uh, and, right. Let me just um, call the administration, right? Um, okay, how do we run this uh, session? Um, do you need uh, my help, sir, to make the breakout room? How many breakout rooms do we need? Okay. Um, uh, right. Ms. Ayu, can you help with the number of, or is there any? Yeah. Um, so we, you need to divide one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. About nine, are you? Seven. Uh, Bu Ana is not. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, About eight. Yeah, yeah, eight, sorry. I'm gonna get the list of the students. Um, Bu Ayu, actually I have shared the academic advisor list to our freshmen as well. So uh, I think we can just make the breakout room and then uh, go along the list. So room one gonna be with Pa Marco, uh, room two gonna be with Bu Ayu, just, yeah. According to the list uh, order, can we do that? Yeah, we know, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Ibu Ayu, but since Ibu Ana is not here, then yeah, so just eight, so just eight rooms. Bu uh, Bu Ana students can be put into my room. That's fine. After we have already done with the breakout session, so the student has to go to the main uh, room again, or how is it? Um, I think the schedule is until 2.40, right? So I think if you, um, I don't know if the, the, the session will last that long, but if it's not, um, maybe they can come back to the main room, but I leave it to the MC, actually. Okay. Or Fabian? Uh, what's the plan? Um, yeah, I think after the academic advisory session, yeah, we can uh, close the today's session. Okay, so you just immediately leave the leave the room, yeah. So I doesn't have to go to the main room again, right, Priska? Yeah, since we already take the All right. Okay. Thank you. This is the list of schedules for Ibu Anna, for Ibu Nuriana, since uh, she's not here. Uh, can you put Janice, Omar, Gilbert, Abrar, and Rafi into my, uh, please join my breakout room, yeah? 